Today I'm playing Asphalt 9 for 10 hours straight. See, the company behind Asphalt saw my video on subway servers and were like, we want to torture him too. So shout out to them for sponsoring my next 10 hours of grinding. Either click the link in the description or scan the QR codes in the top corners of the screen to get the game yourself. I mean, it works though since I was planning on doing this at some point anyways, but this time we added a twist. See, I didn't want to just play on a regular phone screen, so instead I will be experiencing this entire 10 hours while playing on a Nintendo Switch in a Mario Kart racing wheel. Yay! So let's get on to the actual challenge. Now one thing I should mention is that before this video I had never played Asphalt in my life. I had no idea what to expect, and I was pleasantly surprised since they have murder. Yep, you can deliberately 360 into someone, ending their entire bloodline. And that's truly the best part about gaming. Other than that, let's get on to the basics. First, since I had a steering wheel, I was using tilt controls. The only problem though is this wheel isn't made for Asphalt 9 and is extremely sensitive with the game. One tiny turn to the left gets you ramming into a wall if you aren't careful, like right here how I did this for 15 straight seconds until I just walled in my own shame. The other problem was my steering wheel is supposed to have those suction cup thingies to keep it in place, but those didn't work. Maybe it's because my desk is wood, but either way, I had to deal with trying to keep the wheel stationary, and that gets a bit old after 10 hours. But anyways, let's get back to the actual game and our abilities. There's drifting, the best way to turn corners, tricks where you jump off things to do barrel rolls and stuff, nitro, a way to gain a ton of speed really quickly, which you gain by doing stuff like drifting, tricks, and murder, and finally the shockwave. This is when you press down on the nitro button twice in quick succession and get a really large burst of speed. It also makes everyone around you really easy to kill, so I'm just glad that the team put as much thought into the murder mechanics as possible. That's our basic abilities that I would learn to slowly get better at throughout the 10 hours, which was good because I was really bad at first, and kinda still am. But onto the game's main content, we have my career, where I spent most of my 10 hours. This is probably the easiest way to unlock stuff because there are a lot of levels, and in these levels there are a few different modes. The first one is the general race. It's you versus a bunch of dudes who probably look like Lord Farquaad. These ones are nice to rack up the deaths since you can kill anybody without repercussions and no one else goes after you. Next we have the time attacks. It's all just you racing against the clock with checkpoints that give you extra time. Pretty solid mode but also my least favorite since it isn't chaotic enough. And finally we have the best mode, police chases. Before I played this mode for the first time, I thought that maybe all the deaths we were creating weren't actual people and it was more of a remote controlled car type of situation. But no, our crimes against humanity haven't been forgiven and that's pretty clearly shown by all the cops chasing after us. They work together, try to corner us, and I honestly think they might be going for the kill too. So if the cops are real, the random cars on the street must also be regular people trying to go to their day jobs, so you already know what we gotta do to them. And that's the main modes in my career. But we also have extra missions that you can do in each race, like doing two 360s or a barrel roll. I end up forgetting about these a lot though, so I often had to go back and try them again to get the full prizes. And this is what I grinded for almost three hours straight until finally I decided to try out the other modes. The first one being multiplayer and this was a train wreck. Basically how this game works is every race you do, you earn tokens and can upgrade your cars with them. But each car has a limit of how much it can be upgraded, unless you find blueprints and then can do some more, but we didn't really have any of those right now. Normally you're supposed to get more upgrades to your cars by playing daily. The game gives you rewards each day like special events to help you with this. Then another option is features like the game's battle pass or packs, which can give you a ton of blueprints, but I wanted to do my entire 10 hours without spending any money, so that wasn't an option for me. And because of these restrictions, I ended up getting decimated. So I had what I thought were pretty good cars around rank 700 to 900, but in my very first multiplayer match, I got matched with people up to rank 2500. Yeah, not the best situation. And ultimately, no matter how good you drive, you can't beat people who are much higher level than you, so we didn't do too hot. To be honest, it probably also didn't help that I crashed a few times, but yeah, that's a last place. At the very least though, it put me in Bronze League, which I was like, okay, maybe this will have more cars my skill level, but nope, still a lot of great cars. Me, and one dude who probably felt the same intimidation that I did. It happens. Oh, also another thing I learned about the multiplayer in this game is there's no collision for other cars, which does make sense for a competitive format, but it kinda made me sad since I wouldn't be able to make other people angry. So clearly, we weren't ready for multiplayer just yet. And that was fine, I still had around 7 hours left to grind. So I went back to my career, 
played for 30 minutes until eventually my game crashed. Gotta love the Nintendo Switch. But this turned out to be a great thing since I received both 100,000 coins and 200 tokens right after it. I'll take that great customer support. And this money was great because I could finally upgrade my Camaro, the main car I was using by a ton, and get it all the way up to rank 1,120. I wouldn't use my new upgrades just yet though because here's where I check the game's events. There are special races you can do to win extra coins, car parts, or other stuff like that and the one I found out to be the most fruitful was the Gobble Day. This was a special task for Thanksgiving, which was going to end during my 10 hour challenge. And in the task, we don't even have to use our own cars and get these insane ones instead. I first tried the event without looking too much into it and realized, first of all, it's really fun to use a stronger car. And secondly, this was the most profitable thing in the game. In one 30 second race, I got 14,000 credits and I was able to repeat it and get up to 91,000 by the time I ran out of missions. It also placed me within the top 50% of racers, so when the challenge ends, I would get an additional 75,000 credits. So yeah, if you play this game, check your events, especially during holidays. After this though, it was time to get back to the grind. I decided that I would complete the entirety of chapter one, or at least as close to it as possible before finishing out the day with multiplayer races, and that went pretty well. Over this time, I would go on to unlock another car, which would become my new main since it had the highest possible rank and I just played missions one by one. Which means it's probably the perfect time to talk about my mental state. Now I went through a wide variety of emotions during this challenge. And I won't lie, first of all, it was frustration. I'd never played a game with a racing wheel before this, other than like Mario Kart Wii. Shout out to Wii Wheels. And like I said before, it was really touchy and hard to get used to. But around 30 minutes in, I hit my stride and that's when the game became fun. But now, yeah, this was awful. I feel like any time you do something repetitive like a racing game for 10 hours, seven hours is when it starts to get really bad. And like clockwork, I was really feeling the pain. But I was in way too deep at this point, so I kept going through it. Shout out to MasterChef for being on my side monitor, by the way. That was pretty key. Now, once we made it to around seven hours and 30 minutes in, I decided to stop with my career for now since I needed to race some real people. So ultimately, I wasn't able to complete chapter one within my 10 hours of playing but we did finally go back to absolutely the best part about this game, the multiplayer. While my career is fun, multiplayer is where this game shines because it gives you full races rather than playing a certain part of the map with a few missions. And playing against real people will always be more competitive, so yeah, it's just better. My goal was to grind to silver rank and things were going good at first, but then I realized that once we made it to the upper parts of Bronze League, we started facing off against even crazier cars. I didn't even know a Class D car could get up to rank 2000, but that's what I had to play against, and it was hard. It felt like a yo-yo where I'd get so close to completing my goal and then get destroyed by people who played longer than me. Then one time my Switch completely broke and gave me one of these. Yeah, I wasn't even mad about this, it was just funny. But that's how I spent my last two and a half hours, going up and down the leaderboard since my mind wouldn't let me do too much more. Now if you want to see another video of this game, check out my second channel where my friend Brian and I saw what the difference between me who played the game for 10 hours and him who was a brand new player would be. For this video, I created a club, which you can feel free to join as well. I know, its name is amazing. And one last shout out to Asphalt9. I had a lot of fun with it until my brain started dying, so check out the game in the description and pinned comment. Anyways, that's 10 hours done, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye.